The time has finally come. After years and years of waiting, the Twisby Eco is upon us. We've been teased with designs, we've voted on its name, we've fantasized about its ultra affordable price. Is it all we've hoped for? Is it a game changer? Or will it crack and break like so many others before it? That's what I hope to uncover in this review of the Twisby Eco. The Eco is the sixth model in Twisby's lineup available in two colors, white or black, and was designed with the intention of being as economical as possible. Currently, several models sell for $50, which is already a pretty affordable price point. Beating that price by any margin while maintaining any kind of quality would surely be a challenge. Twisby has released the Eco for an impressive $28.99 and, from what I can tell, have managed to create a quality pin in the process. To achieve their goal, Twisby has removed as much metal from the pin as possible and simplified their design. The only metal in the pin is the nib, the cap band, and the clip. There's no metal accent bands or collar for the piston unit, and if you count the cap assembly as one part, then there's only 10 pieces to the entire pin, with the major change being the section and barrel are now one solid piece. The packaging is very similar to what we've seen with previous pins, including lots of pictorial instructions, but the biggest difference is the piston wrench is now made from plastic instead of metal. The pin itself looks and feels really good. The smooth round barrel is contrasted by a hexagonal cap and piston knob that gives the pin a unique aesthetic. I've always been happy with the quality of pistons in Twisby's pins, and the Eco doesn't disappoint. It's wonderfully smooth and kind of unexpected in a $30 pen. At the front of the barrel, you'll find an O-ring just like you would on any other Twisby, except for the Micarta. The O-ring provides positive feedback that the cap is securely attached to the pin. The only downside is that it gives the pin, and others that use it, a bit of an unfinished, almost cheap look. My view on this aspect has slowly changed as it never used to bother me, but I now notice the sight of O-rings are a bit of annoyance. You can see another o-ring at the back of the barrel which is used to help the cap post, and while I think it'll do a fine job for most situations, it's not as secure as I'd like. I've never had it pop off during use, but with the pin in my regular grip, it is possible for me to get the cap to pop off by rubbing it against my hand. Taking it a bit further, the cap can actually be shaken off. Now, unless you're trying to write while sitting on a paint shaker, this will never be an issue, but I do have pins with caps that'll post so securely that my two-year-old can't remove it. This is not one of those pins. As mentioned previously, the section and barrel are now molded as one piece. Hopefully this will eliminate many of the cracking issues that's plagued Twisby pins in the past. The number 5 stainless steel nib is available in sizes extra fine, fine, medium, bold, and 1.1 stub. Another improvement with this design is that it's much easier to remove the nib and feed. Just pinch and pull. Seriously, that's it. The feed has a little shelf molded into it, so aligning the nib and feed is super simple. Then pinch the two together and shove it in the section. This will make cleaning the nib and swapping it so much easier. Thank you, Twisby. Now let's see how the Eco stacks up to all the other Twisby pins. From left to right, we have the Mini, the Micarta, the Classic, the Eco, the 540, and the VAC 700. The Eco is a sizable pin, and because of its cap, has sort of a chunky profile. Removing the caps, we can see that it's just a hair longer than the Diamond 500 series, which I've always found to be a well-sized, comfortable pin. And since the Mini will most likely be used posted, let's see how it compares. This is why the Mini is one of my favorite pins. It's short and compact when not in use, yet comfortable and very usable when posted. Speaking of posting, might as well see how they compare. The Eco is fairly large when posted, but thanks to the cap's light weight, it doesn't feel nearly as unbalanced as posting the 580 or the VAC 700. Honestly, I could use the Eco in either configuration. The Classic, on the other hand, I can't use without posting. It's just too thin and light for me otherwise. Now the only thing left to do is ink it up and get to writing. I'm going to use some Omos Turquoise for this sample as it's one of my favorites. The ink capacity of the Eco is an impressive 1.8 milliliters. You can see there's quite an air bubble after the first fill, so to get the max capacity, you need to invert the pen, push the air out, and refill it. I opted for the medium nib on my pen and was very impressed with its smoothness and flow. I wish every nib would come out of the box like this. No scratchiness, no roughness, just good medium consistent flow. 
I haven't noticed any hard starts or skipping either, and while not every Twisby or Eco for that matter will perform like this, it is promising to see such good results. Twisby has done an excellent job with the Eco. It's certainly not revolutionary, and I don't think it'll put that much pressure on any other manufacturers, but it is one heck of an addition to the under $30 category. I'm very pleased with the Eco's performance. It'll be quite some time before we can determine its durability, but in the meantime, it'll join my EEC rotation, and if anything changes, I'll be sure to let you guys know.